Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, you will learn how to integrate Stripe into your Drop Source applications so you can process credit card transactions in a Drop Source app without writing a single line of code. In order to make this integration happen, we will use Backendless as the middleman that will be responsible for the actual communication with Stripe. And uh, the integration goes like this your Drop Source app will communicate with an API service deployed in Backendless, and Backendless will then communicate with Stripe to uh, handle credit card transactions and then respond back to your Drop Source app with the actual uh, confirmation of a transaction. Uh, it is very, very straightforward process, uh, consists of pretty much just three steps. One, you will need to install Stripe uh, plugin into Backendless, and it's, uh, it's available right from Backendless Marketplace. We will go over the details. Then you will need to export API docs for that Stripe service into your Drop Source app. And then in the Drop Source application, you will use an API call to make the request to process a credit card transaction. Uh, let's just dig in and start the process uh, for this. Uh, I do have uh, a Backhandles app available right here. And uh, you will notice that if you go to Marketplace and then select All Services, one of the services is Stripe. So this service essentially provides all the functionality in order to integrate uh, Stripe into the client side. And then for, for, for the purposes of this video, the client side is going to be your drop source application. Uh, all additional services, all the API services available in Backendless Marketplace can be installed into an app and that app needs to be on a paid plan. So even though the actual plugin doesn't cost anything, your Backendless application needs to be on a paid plan. So if you, uh, when you create an application, if you go to billing, just uh, uh, add a credit card. Uh, Backendless apps come with a free trial, so you just you still need to add a credit card. It is not charged while you're in the trial, and and then you can install the actual uh, product from the marketplace. And after that, once the trial is over, just choose one of the paid options, uh, paid plans that uh, the app will stay on. So here I already added the credit card, and uh, then I go to marketplace, select all services, click Stripe. It is uh, it's helpful to open the documentation in a separate browser window because this page will describe everything uh, that you need to know as far as how to configure it. We will actually use it right now. And then uh, in here, back in backend, let's click on install and you'll be presented with this pop-up that will gather configuration information for your Stripe uh, app. So uh, in order to gather this information, you will actually need, of course, uh, to create an account in Stripe. So here I'm already logged in to my account. And uh, in here, you will need to configure your uh, uh, Stripe uh, account with information about uh, Backendless. Uh, I know it may sound confusing, but uh, actually if you go over the documentation for the Stripe integration plugin, it describes it in... Uh, uh, with a lot of details, so you will know exactly what to do. But or you can just follow uh, the uh, the steps that I go through in this video. So in your Stripe uh, console, uh, you need to click on Developers, and in here select Webhooks. So first of all, we need to add an endpoint that points back into Backendless. And the reason that you need to add this endpoint is anytime you process a credit card transaction, Stripe will call back into Backendless to let it know that the transaction uh, went through or there was a problem. In, in any case, uh, the back Backendless will know about the status of this transaction by the virtue of adding this endpoint here. So click on Add Endpoint. And here we will need to put the actual URL. The format of this URL is documented in the Stripe integration plugin documentation. And uh, it looks like this. So right here, you will see this URL. So you can just copy this URL and paste this URL right into this uh, window right here. And inside of this URL, there are two placeholders. One is the application ID, and the second is the API key. So these are going to be application ID of your Backendless application. So back in Backendless console, uh, you can just cancel this for now and go to Manage and copy application ID. So we just use this icon, copy to clipboard. And in here, we'll need to replace app ID with your actual application ID. 
Next one is going to be API key, and it need, this needs to be the REST API key, available right here, REST API key. Also copy it and put it right into that placeholder that you get in the URL. And then just click Add Endpoint. So this endpoint is registered, and at this point we can gather all the information that you would need to configure Stripe integration plugin in Backendless. The very first thing is click on the actual endpoint. You will have the signing secret, so click to reveal and copy this value into the clipboard and then go back to Backendless, once again Marketplace, All Services, Stripe, click Install and then signing secret, that's where it's going to be uh, paste it to. Currency is going to be US dollar and then there are two more values which is publishable key and secret key. Both of these can be obtained from your Stripe console. In fact if you go to API keys you will see publishable key and secret key. So copy this value which is the publishable key and paste it into the corresponding field in Backendless. And finally we have the secret key so click to reveal, copy it Make sure to copy the entire value, and because uh, if you don't copy the, the entire value, of course, the integration will not work, and paste it right into the secret key. Click Activate, and this installs Stripe plugin right into your backendless application, and you get this uh, nice green pop-up confirming that it has been installed. You can actually see it right in the list of the API services if you click on the business logic icon. Right here in the list there's going to be Stripe service and uh, uh, all the uh, APIs in that Stripe service are available uh, to you. You can invoke them directly from the console but here uh, this essentially opens up the path to uh, start adding this service into the drop source application. To do this you need to make sure to click on the actual Stripe service and you will have this icon that uh, the tooltip reads generate API docs. Click on it and uh, the very first option, there are several, but the one that is selected by default is going to be the, the format that drop source expects. So click on generate and then uh, click copy. So it copies the URL of the document that is generated for this specific service into the clipboard and that's the URL you will need to paste in your drop source application. Specifically here if you go to your drop source application select the API tab and click the plus sign and uh, paste that URL from Backendless into this field click add and this adds Stripe API service from Backendless into your application. So you can close this. You need to make sure to declare a device variable in here. Uh, that variable needs to be called user token. You actually can call it anything you want but I prefer to call it user token. And uh, for your API click uh, these three dots and select set authentication and uh, you will need to set the API key which will be the device variable user token. So this essentially brings the API right into your drop source application and at this point we can start invoking Stripe API service uh, to process credit card transactions. Now that the Stripe service has been important let's add the actual API endpoint so it can be used inside of the drop source application logic. Click on the list of these API endpoints and you will see there are multiple. The one we will be using is this one. It's going to look like this slash services slash Stripe slash charge slash card. This is an API endpoint that actually processes the whole transaction where you submit a credit card and you get back a confirmation with all the details that Stripe returns. Uh, if you choose to do it a different way you can actually generate a credit card token, get the token and then process a charge using this token. So this would be a two-step approach where with slash charge slash card it's a single step approach uh, all done in a single transaction from the client side perspective. So select this endpoint slash charge slash card and then click add. Then click on the actual API endpoint and you will see that uh, there's quite a bit of information you can submit in the body of the request and you get back quite a bit of information as well right uh, from Stripe where Backendless essentially mediates these requests. So let's configure the request right here. As you can see I do have a form which looks 
fairly traditional where we collect the name uh, on the credit card, the actual card number, expiration date, and the security code. A couple of things to, to note. Well, first of all, name on card and card number are going to be very, very straightforward. In fact, in the uh, parameters in the body, you will see that there is going to be name and number. So you can just take name, drag it to the field that accepts name. You can see it becomes data bound. Same thing for number. So these two are bound. Uh, when it comes to expiration month and year, just simply dragging these two properties onto these fields is not going to give you the desired result for the reason that in the payload expiration month and expiration year are integers while if you were to do the data binding they will be submitted as strings so in order to bind these two uh, properties to the corresponding values what you need to do is click on it and in the elements locate the field which will be in this case expiration month so here's expiration month then find the text property and make sure to select int value so this way we will be extracting integer value of the text that the user would enter into the expiration month in this case and repeat the same thing for the expiration year so here we're going to select expiration year locate the text and then select the int value so this way we have expiration month expiration year uh, name number and then for security code it is bound to CVC so if CVC is a string so you can just drag and drop CVC to the security code finally the amount in this case uh, the application is hard-coded to process $1.95 the amount property in the payload must be a number of cents of the actual transaction so in this case let's just hard code 195 so 195 cents is going to be $1.95 so this way the payload uh, includes all the minimal information you would need to process a credit card transaction let me walk you through on what happens with the responses so in the responses uh, in a single response you get this id and then what i did in the application i have another page called confirmation page and this page just displays the id of uh, the confirmation id of that transaction so in order to display right here in this label the ID that we get in the response, uh, whenever I get the response in the events, notice that here in the events for the 200 successful invocation, a couple of things are happening. So first of all, I set the pay button to be enabled and I stop the activity indicator so it stops spinning and goes away. And then I set the ID from the response in a device variable called confirmation number and uh, this device uh, variable is simply just a string variable that will contain value from the response and finally I uh, change the current page to the confirmation page and then when the confirmation page shows up in here for the page uh, properties when the page uh, I mean in the page events when the page appears what I do is I get the value from the device variables and just display it in that confirmation number text. So with all of this uh, being in place, let's build this application. And as soon as it is built, we're going to run it and see uh, how transactions uh, from drop source to Stripe are working. Now the application is built and let's run it. Um, it always helps to open network activity log just so you can see how requests are structured and what you get in the responses make sure to select the network tab and let's fill out this form I'm going to use my real credit card right here therefore some parts are going to be blurred out uh, also notice that in here as I enter my credit card number uh, my drop source application includes logic to determine the card type. In this case, it is MasterCard. And I also added some logic to break down the card number and add these spaces just so it looks uh, exactly like uh, the credit card number on the actual plastic card. And uh, let's enter the expiration date and year and the security code. So now all the data is there and uh, let's process this transaction.
So here's the card request that goes out. And now we have processed this credit card transaction. There is a confirmation number. If you were to go back to Stripe and then go into Payments, you will actually see that payment. Here's a payment uh, processed uh, today, December 28th, in the amount of $1.95. So it is in here. Additionally, if you were to go into your backendless application, in the, uh, in the data section, there will be Stripe events table created for you that will include uh, information about this transaction with the actual ID and the type of this uh, event. Uh, it will be stored by the Stripe uh, plugin. Uh, so you will basically be able to capture all the events that are happening through Backendless. Additionally, whenever a callback from Stripe into Backendless takes place, Backendless sends out a publish subscribe message using Backendless messaging. So this way, if you have other clients built to work uh, in you, with your application, let's say you may have some sort of management console, you could just tune that console using Backendless API to uh, receive notifications whenever transactions from your application, from your users, take place. Uh, and uh, this Stripe integration plugin actually gives you all the information that you need to know about how to do that. But the most important thing is uh, we have uh, uh, a native transaction from without any web views, without any uh, workarounds that people were trying to do. 100% uh, drop source application built in here. So just, just a few more things that I wanted to show you. Uh, the trick for uh, determining the card number and how to break it down into these uh, groups of four. In here for the card number, if you click on the value changed managed, uh, you'll see there's quite a bit of logic in here and all of this logic uh, essentially deals with recognizing the card type and uh, breaking it up into uh, blocks of four. So for example, here we check if the card number element, the text on the element, uh, equals to four uh, characters long. In this case, if it is four, then we essentially just append uh, space and then set the value of, what, uh, of the result of this uh, operation into the field on the screen. And then uh, subsequent checks, they check whether it is equals to 9 or if it equals to uh, 14. So those are the positions where we need to insert additional space. And when it comes to uh, checking the card type, the way I handled it is right here. There is a, an image that is currently hidden and uh, uh, on, the, on the screen. So whenever the user continues to enter the value, there are some rules that you can program and you can find them uh, actually online as to how to determine the card type. So in this case, for example, if the uh, card value starts with four, then it is going to be Visa. If the card number starts with 34, then it is uh, American Express. Or if the value starts with five zero, uh, or 5.5, five, then in this case it becomes MasterCard. So, in the, so basically in the media I have import different uh, images for the card types and then I'm just operating with these images, putting them right here into that image placeholder. And that's really all the logic to determine the card type. And th this could get rather complex because there are a lot of different cards, a lot of different rules, but it is totally possible to do it right in your drop source application. So this concludes this demo. Hopefully you found it useful and informative and uh, you'll be able to replicate it in your drop source applications. But the bottom line is pretty much everything that Stripe has to offer for the credit card processing is now available natively for drop source application without writing a single line of code. Thank you and as always, happy codeless coding.